Hi, this is a tap and this is a die. They are both tools that perform thread cutting. When you use this one, it's called tapping. And when you use this one, it's called threading. Tapping and threading 3D printed parts is definitely possible. It's more or less a question of whether or not it's useful. I tap and thread 3D printed parts from time to time, but it's kind of a niche thing. So let's talk about why you would do it, when you'd want to do it, and how you can do it best. As far as the logistics for how to actually tap and thread a 3D printed part, it's very, very simple. There are numerous tutorials on YouTube teaching you how to do it for wood and metal. Plastic is extremely forgiving, especially PLA. That and the fact that my tolerances aren't usually very strict means that I usually just do this with a drill. I'm sure anybody that actually has any machining experience is probably cringing at me doing this right now. But for my purposes, my tolerances, my strength requirements, this is almost always the fullest extent of what I might need. In fact, more often than not, I don't need things to be perfect or even good. I just want them to be fast. So to that end, you can definitely drill by hand a tap into a 3D printed part. I think ideally though, you'd want a drill press and a little clamp. Or even more ideally, just do it by hand. These are a couple test pieces that I designed and printed to make this video. If you have a part that you're going to thread, it helps if you add a little chamfer to the edge of it so that you can make sure that the die stays straight as you're cutting it through. Maintaining as close to a perfectly perpendicular angle is probably the most important thing for tapping and threading. Adding a little bit of chamfer at the tip will make it easier to start straight, which will make it easier to finish straight. If you look closely at a die, you'll notice that one end has sort of chamfered teeth. This is the same concept, to help you stay straight and perpendicular. If you've looked at the parts in the back, watched any of my previous videos, or have any idea how 3D printing works at all, you can probably already see why tapping and threading doesn't have much of a name in the 3D printing world. When you have a precision machine that can create something in any shape and size, what's the point of making it not the same shape and size that you need, including the threads? Especially when Fusion 360 and so many other programs have such an easy to use thread tool. When I made my video about how to create modeled threads in Fusion 360, that was one of the most common pieces of feedback that I got, was people saying, I didn't realize it would be this easy. There's a little bit of a catch-22 that happens at the intersection of tapping and threading, modeling threads, and using professionally fabricated nuts and bolts out of metal. Printer filament, in general, is not that strong. You can make a 3D printed fastener stronger by making it bigger. Making it bigger makes it cost more, and it also makes it heavier. Once you get to that point, you kind of start to wonder what the advantages are. Professionally fabricated metal nuts and bolts cost pennies. They're cheaper, smaller, stronger, and lighter. I have snapped plenty of 3D printed plastic bolts of varying sizes, but I have never ever snapped a single metal bolt of any size. So with all this in consideration, you might be wondering to yourself, okay, so when would I actually tap or thread a 3D printed part? It's kind of unfortunate because I think tapping and threading is really cool, but it just doesn't have that much of a place with 3D printed parts. It just seems to me that there's no reason that you wouldn't just model the threads. While recording this video, I thought to myself, okay, well maybe you would use a tap when you were printing a 3D printed part that didn't have enough room for a nut. But if you compare the size of the bolt head to the nut, they're pretty much the same size. Even if you don't have room to embed or countersink a nut, you can still fit it in there somewhere. There is still a good amount of projects though that I would choose a 3D printed fastener over something that was professionally fabricated. But the nice thing about the ability to 3D print and design everything about your own fasteners is you get to choose the color, you can embed things, you can emboss, I, I emboss text into them very frequently. You have a lot more room for creativity and specific designing. So between 3D printed fasteners and pre-made ones, I think it's kind of a toss up. I can see an equal number of situations where I would want to use either one. And unfortunately, it's my opinion that as cool as I think tapping and threading 3D printed parts is, or really just tapping and threading in general, it just doesn't really seem to have a place in 3D printed parts. I guess rather than being sad that there's no reason to tap or thread 3D printed parts, I guess I should be excited that 3D printing is so advanced that I can design a tap before the part is even finished, which is I think something that 20 years ago we would have been really marveling at. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you learned something new. Please remember to like and subscribe and I hope you have a wonderful day.